Good morning. Bobby, please read the problem, and Bo, please translate. Flippin' physics. According to NASA, the mass of the Earth is 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. The mass of the moon is 7.3 times 10 to the 22nd kilograms. And the mean distance between the Earth and the moon is 3.84 times 10 to the 8th meters. Stop. Mass of Earth is 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. And the mass of moon is 7.3 times 10 to the 22nd kilograms. But I don't know what variable to use for the mean distance between the Earth and the moon. Let's use capital R with a subscript of capital E dash capital M. Okay, that equals 3.84 times 10 to the 8th meters. Bobby? What is the force of gravitational attraction between the Earth and the moon? Force of gravity equals question mark. Billy, please solve the problem. Well, we need to use Newton's universal law of gravitation, or the big G equation. Uh, force of gravity equals the universal gravitational constant, or big G, times the mass of the Earth, times the mass of the Moon, all divided by the square of R, which is the distance between the centers of mass of the two objects. And then we get... Billy, let, let's review that for just a second. Class R is not... The, the radius. radius. R is... The, the distance, distance between, between the centers, centers of mass of, mass of the, the two, two objects. objects. This can be confusing because sometimes R is... The, the radius. radius. Thanks. Billy, please continue. Sure. Um, plugging in numbers gives us 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 times uh, 5.97 times 10 to the 24th times 7.3 times 10 to the 22nd. Mm, all divided by... Oh, uh, R is the mean distance between the Earth and the Moon, so uh, divided by 3.84 times 10 to the 8th um, squared, and that works out to be 1.97134 times 10 to the 20th, or 2.0 times 10 to the 20th Newtons with two significant digits. Great, okay. Remember, this is the force the Earth is applying on the Moon, and the force the moon is applying on the Earth. So the moon right now is being pulled towards the Earth with a force of 2.0 times 10 to the 20th newtons. Turns out, we can actually determine the acceleration of the moon, which is caused by the Earth. The net force acting on the moon from the Earth equals the force the Earth exerts on the moon, which equals the mass of the moon times the acceleration of the moon. Therefore, we can solve for the acceleration of the moon, plug in numbers, and get the acceleration of the moon towards the Earth to be roughly 0.0027 meters per second squared. And notice that acceleration is a constant number. Therefore, we can use a uniformly accelerated motion equation to determine how long it is before the moon crashes into the Earth and destroys all life on the planet. The displacement of the moon, or the mean distance between the Earth and the moon, equals the velocity initial of the moon, which, relative to the Earth, is zero, times change in time, plus one-half times the acceleration of the moon times the change in time squared. We can plug in all the numbers and rearrange the equation to get the change in time in seconds. However, I think it would be much better expressed in days. So, roughly 6.2. Two days before the moon slams into the Earth and pretty much everything on the planet goes extinct. Good luck, everybody. I think I'm going to go spend my last six days with my family. Bye. That cannot be right, can it? I do not think so. No way. That does not make sense. Uh, hey, Raivat. How is India? Currently worried about the mass planet-wide extinction due to a collision between the Earth and the Moon. Otherwise, India is fine. Thanks. That's good. Actually, as the Moon moves towards the Earth, the distance between the two will decrease, so the force of gravity will increase, so the acceleration is actually not uniform, so we cannot use the uniformly accelerated motion equations. That just makes it worse. We all die sooner because the acceleration increases as the Earth and the Moon get closer to one another. There are a lot more forces acting on the Moon than just the force of gravity caused by the Earth, right? I mean, there's the Sun, Mars, Venus, Jupiter. 
Right, but I think he's just considering the Earth and the Moon here. I mean, the Moon is in orbit around the Earth. That's it. The Moon is in orbit around the Earth. Yeah. He did not identify the direction he summed the forces in. He summed the forces in the in direction. Therefore, the acceleration of the Moon is a centripetal acceleration. It is the acceleration which keeps the Moon moving in orbit around the Earth. The inertia of the Moon tries to keep it moving in a straight line, and the centripetal acceleration keeps it moving in a circle. The net force in the in direction equals the force the Earth causes on the Moon. Therefore, the force the Earth causes on the Moon is the net force in the in direction, and is therefore the centripetal force which causes the Moon's orbit. I get it. We are all not going to die in 6.2 days. That's good. But in, in like 7 billion years, our sun will expand into a red giant star and kill us all. Right, but before that, the sun will heat the earth up so much we won't have any atmosphere left and that will kill us all. Did y'all notice the R in Newton's universal law of gravitation actually en actually did end up being the orbital radius of the moon around the center of mass of the Earth-Moon system in this problem. I mean, sometimes R is the radius. Thank you very much for learning with us today. We enjoyed learning with you.